What's up people, Dr. Wolves is right here and welcome to another episode of Game Gems. Now, I said to you guys that we were going to leave Nintendo for a little bit because the next lot of Nintendo stuff is quite massive and quite huge because I've got a massive collection. So I have to take my time to see what I'm going to pick for my gems. So I'm going to move on to a rival that was with them for many, many years. I'm talking about decades of pure rivalry, but sadly Nintendo beat them so hard they disbanded from consoles, and that is the Sega. SEGA! Now, I was going to talk about the Sega Mega Drive itself, or the Genesis, as you guys know, in America. However, my collection for the Sega Mega Drive and the Genesis is huge. I've got hundreds of Sega Mega Drive games. So I thought to myself, go for its one of its lifespans for the Mega Drive, and that is the Mega Drive CD. I don't have the 32X because number one, it's extremely expensive and very rare, and as well, I don't have any of the games for it. However, I do have a few library games of the Sega Mega Drive CD. However, I've only got nine full games, and I've got five demos, because they're very hard to come by. However, I'm still gonna give you my five picks. Well. Four picks, I'd say, because one of them was actually a double pack. So, let's get into it, shall we? The first one I want to talk about is this one. This is a dual pack, which has two games in it. The first one is Soul Fierce. Now, Soul Fierce is literally a Gladius game. A Gladius game is like something in Japan that is one of them arcade Japanese games, which is pretty much a starship, pretty much side-scrolling, shooting different type of monsters, you know, different type of Starcraft ships and everything. Straightforward, but by God, it's hard. It really is hard. And to be honest, for a game that's on the Mega Drive CD, which as you guys know, didn't really sell very well back in the day, because the Mega Drive CD actually died very quickly after a few years, because it was the last thing that came out, I think, after the 32X, and I think it only lasted like a year or two, and then it, bang, it just died. So it was just a shame. But for this game though, being on the Mega Drive CD was actually one of its good situations because the game was action packed, had a killing soundtrack, the controls were super smooth and the graphics and how the game was being played was absolutely spot on. It's definitely worth a try out. If you guys can find a copy of this, I'd encourage you guys to get it because it's really darn good. And speaking of which, Let's talk about the other game that's right next on the opposite side, and that is Cobra Commander. And as you guys, as you guys know, Cobra Command has been on numerous consoles. It's been on the Sega Mega Drive. It's been on the SNES. What else? So can you say? The Mega Drive CD version, out of what I've got in my library, is one of the good ones. It really is. It's not the perfect game. But it does have its charms for a Cobra Command game. It's not as good as the Mega Drive version, but it still, it still has its charms of what it should have been. And it's really a fun game. It really is. Not the best, but it's definitely still a little bit of a gem in my eyes. Not perfect, but not terrible. So yeah, it's just a quick blab about them two games because they're the ones that's I played for a little bit and I've enjoyed them. That one I played a lot of. That one, I mainly hit a mess on it, but I still enjoy it. It's definitely a gem. But these next three are the ones I really do play a lot. And the next one I'm talking about is Star Wars Rebel Assault. This is an amazing Star Wars game. It really is. Excuse me. You're pretty much the Rebels in Star Wars. I think it was Star Wars Episode Five which I think is Revenge of the Sith, I think. I'm not 100% sure on what the, what the um, title was again. But pretty much, all the way through the game, you're literally in one, of the star, in one of the spaceships. I think it's one of the TIE Fighters, if I recall, or one of the um, Drifters that's in the, um, the Battle of Hoth. But it's pretty much, you're playing as, as you guys know, Luke Skywalker. And you pretty much destroy the Death Star, you do the Hoth missions, you do all the TIE fighting missions. Literally, it's everything from the first three movies from the 80s I'm not, and the 70s. I'm not talking about the ones that we know back in the 90s. The original trifecta. And it's super good. It's a lot of entertaining. The music is there. 
The music's perfect. There's no crappy versions of Star Wars. The whole music is in this. The, the true Star Wars soundtrack. Um, there's some sounds. There's some voice actors in it that is uh, hit and miss. But that's what you get for old games. Because sometimes they're good, sometimes they're awful. And this is like a hit and miss. But the controls are super fluent. Super smooth to the very end. And tell you truly though, the boss fight at the end of this game is so much fun. I definitely would play it again to try and do that boss fight again. Like I said, never beaten it. But I did get to the boss, but I kept on failing. So yeah, Star Wars Rebel Clash. I mean, Rebel Assault. Definitely in one of my gems. Next up, ooh, which one to pick? Ah, let's go for this one. Earthworm Jim, the special edition. Now, Earthworm Jim, as you guys know, has just been announced. This is being pre-recorded, as you guys know. Has just been announced that he's getting a new show or film on Netflix, if I recall. Or it could be an actual, actual movie. Do I think it's going to be good? I think it can be, because Earthworm Jim is quite an entertaining character. And as you guys know, Earthworm Jim is actually an absolute fantastic character. It sadly has been neglected for many years, but thankfully, thankfully he has come back. Hopefully they're going to get some good fan base for it and get a new game for it. But this one, this Earthworm Jim game is the best one out there in my eyes. It really is. It's one of the best side scrolls out there. This game could definitely compete with Rayman, Castlevania. You get my gist, okay? And it's a lot of fun, even though it's just a freaking worm in a suit. And the villain is some sort of fish. <laughs> it's the most weirdest, it's the weirdest thing ever, but it works because worms get eaten by fish. So, yeah, that's the thing that's quite funny about it. But the controls in this game are so damn perfect. They're fluent, they're easy, they're smooth. The soundtrack's killer. It really is good on the Sega CD. I thought when I first bought this, I thought it was going to be absolutely awful. But I was completely wrong. It's one of the best ones out there. It really is. To be honest, it could be the best one at, after what, at all, of all time. And also as well, the mapping of the game as well, the look of each level is so damn unique and so much fun. It definitely fits the game. It's the same thing with Rayman on the PS1. The scenery was perfect for Rayman. But if you compare it to the Rayman Legends on the PS4, it didn't work in my eyes. It was awful. So always, if the game fits the scenery of the game, it's always perfect, it's really good, and it's definitely a gem. So if you guys can definitely go ahead and find this copy of it, very much good luck to you because this game is like worth around about 120 quid if you can get a fully complete version. If you get the disc, probably you're gonna pay around about 40 to 30 pound for it if you're lucky, but it's literally, like I said, it's fully complete. Now you may be thinking, before we continue, obviously, why, why did Mega Drive CD get double case ones? To be honest, what I found out is that every single Sega Mega Drive CD case, you got these, you got this, but also on the other side, you got yourself a demo. I took out all my demos and put them in individual cases because I don't want to, you know, you get my gist. Anyhow, final game. Definitely a gem. I bought this specially from Soul Thumb. Thank you, um, guys, for finding this for me. To be honest, I actually found it on the floor because it was just literally... I think they forgot it was there because it was literally, the shop was so ran full of stuff. And like I said, this was around Christmas. And the, the place was just full of video games. But I literally, this, I saw this in the corner of my eye and I had to have it. And luckily it was, to be honest, a cheapo game. And it's the double disc set of Night Trap. Now, as you guys know, right there, people are now freaking out. It's like, oh my God, he's got Night Trap. Now, a lot of people may think that this is an awful game. Angry Video Game Nerd said it was not a really good game. In my eyes, it's so much fun. You're pretty much a CCTV detective watching this house full of teenagers, having a great time, talking about girly things, rocking around with a blooming, with a blooming tennis racket, trying to stop these burglars, or aka these killers, from killing all these, chill, well, killing all these teenagers. And you have to set off all these home loan traps. 
And it's a lot of fun because it's actually quite genius, to be honest. I don't know if this got released before Home Alone or came out after Home Alone. And if it came out after Home Alone, I can see where they got their ideas from. But if it was before Home Alone, Home Alone, did you steal ideas from this? That was a good situation. But anyhow, the, the reason why this in my eyes is a gem is because not any other game that I've ever played was nowhere similar to this. In my eyes, this is unique. I have not played another game like this. I really haven't. And that's why I'm saying this should be a gem because if there is a game out there in this day of age and you guys know it and I don't, please leave in the comments down below because I want to give it a go myself. But if anything is similar to this, let me know because I don't think anything is similar to Night Trap. And I know that there is a remake of this on the PS4 which is made by Limit Run but that version is worth around about 200 to 300 pounds. And I'm not spending that much money on a remake whilst you can get the originator. So, that is what I've got time for today, people. That is my picks of the Sega Mega Drive CD of gems. I don't think I'm able to do another gem games for the Mega Drive CD because I haven't got a lot of them. So this is just going to be a one-off Mega Drive CD episode. It's a nice little special one. They're my picks. As you guys know, we got... Soul Faz, Soul Faz, Cobra Commander, Star Wars Rebel Assault, Earthworm Gem Special Edition, and of course the one I think is the purest of the the purest gem of the Sega Mega Drive CD, Night Trap. So without further ado, people, you might be thinking, what will be the next episode, Dobsy? What is it going to be? To be honest, I'm going to leave a poll after this episode so you guys can vote. I'm going to put three different consoles on there and it and whoever is the toppest one will be the next episode in the future. With that being said, please like, subscribe, comment down below and the people I'm speaking to you guys for subscribing and enjoying these enjoying the series. Cheerio!